Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray, and today I'll be taking a look at the OWC Envoy Express Thunderbolt 3 DIY enclosure for NVMe SSDs. Welcome and thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel and interested in Apple related tech and the HomeKit smart home platform, please hit that subscribe button and tap the bell to get notified when I post new videos. And please do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up. I'd very much appreciate it. So I started making videos for my YouTube channel about three years ago uh, with existing equipment I had and I just cobbled everything together as I needed it. Uh, one thing that's always been a pain in my side is available disk space for all the footage I've taken through these years. Uh, now I archive quite a bit to external disk space hard drives, uh, but my current video projects are always on the fast internal one terabyte SSD in my iMac. Uh, given the existing free space on my internal hard drive, I can only work on one or two videos concurrently. Uh, so for a bit more flexibility, I started looking for external Thunderbolt 3 SSD hard drives. If you've ever searched for similar, you know that these things aren't cheap. I think I remember the least expensive uh, Thunderbolt 3 ex uh, external drive I found was about $500 and the price only went up from there. Uh, so enter the OWC Envoy Express Thunderbolt 3 DIY enclosure that went on pre-order this past June for 68 bucks. I immediately pre-ordered one and it was recently delivered to my doorstep. By the way, they are now priced at $79, which I think is still a good deal. Uh, so being DIY, you need to supply your own NVMe SSD uh, in your preferred storage size. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Let's unbox this and assemble our external Thunderbolt 3 SSD. So here we have the OWC Envoy Express Thunderbolt 3 certified bus power DIY enclosure for NVMe SSDs. And it says on the top that is 300% faster than the fastest USB 3 options and 50% faster than even the fastest Thunderbolt 3 compatible options. And I think when they say Thunderbolt 3, they mean USB-C because they share the same connector. And I've wanted an external drive mainly for video editing. And because the, the one I have now, I use like a combination of external disk space drives and my internal um, iMac SSD. And I do all the immediate editing on my internal drive, then I move that to another library off on an external disk space drive to kind of archive it. But I like to go back and forth if I have to access old footage. Um, and my internal SSD on my iMac is is getting pretty, pretty full. So I thought I'd pick this up and see if I could possibly work off of this. And I'm hoping I can. Um, so when they, they put this on pre-order, I got this on pre-order. I think it was like uh, six to eight bucks on pre-order, something like that. They're now about $75, $79, I think. Um, but I thought it was going to be a cost-effective way to get a uh, SSD external drive. And uh, I also wanted to use this um, portably. So if I get a Mac, MacBook Pro in the future, or maybe even an iPad Pro, since it has the USB-C connector, I could possibly use this. But we'll see how that works out. Um, on the side of the box, it says it's DIY, DIY ready. Easily add any NVMe M.2 2280. SSD. It's bus powered for portable use. Silent, no moving parts. And it comes complete with a 10.2 inch Thunderbolt 3 cable. And assembly tool, if needed, is included. And that's the back of the box. And it shows kind of like the portable use with the drive affixed temporarily to the back of a MacBook Pro. And in the package, it includes the Envoy Express. 10.2 inch Thunderbolt 3 cable, installation tool, optional use slide mount, quick start guide. And here are the specs. And it works with any Mac or PC with a Thunderbolt 3 port. And it supports the NVMe M.2 2280 SSD. And it's bus powered. And here are the, the enclosure dimensions. Again, cable length, 10.2 inches, and the weight at 3.1 ounces. So with this, I didn't have a SSD, so I picked up an XPG SX8200 Pro uh, M2 PCIe Gen 3 by 4 SSD. And the main reason I went with this one, it was two terabytes, and I like the size. 
And of all the kind of reviews that I looked online when looking for these, um, it compares favorably to the Samsung 970 Evo. So I thought I'd pick this one up because it costs quite a bit less. It wasn't uh, super inexpensive, but it was probably one of the lower cost uh, SSDs that I could find available. And again, this is two terabytes, so that should give me a lot more uh, storage capacity than my internal drive. And hopefully it's it's at least fast enough that I can edit video on it, because that's really what I want to use it for. So let's go ahead and unbox these and see what's inside. And then we'll assemble it. This one doesn't even need it. Okay. So inside the Envoy box, have some literature. Piece of hard packing foam and the drive enclosure itself. And that is small and compact. Put that back. And here's that this kind of slide uh, mount if you want to use it. So you can affix this on the back of your, your uh, laptop and then slide the drive over to hold it on there. I probably won't be using this anyway right now because I'll be using it with a desktop. So there's the drive itself, small enclosure, no ports because the Thunderbolt cable is attached. So nice and compact. And it also did come with the tool, if you need the tool. So it comes with everything you need to put this together. I believe that's everything in the box. XPG SX8200 Pro. And there's the SSD itself, and this is the heat sink. And I've heard some people say that uh, you may or may not want to use the heat sink. I probably won't install the heat sink initially. They call it more of a heat spreader. So I'll probably leave this off at least initially and see how it works without it. And here's the SSD. So let's go ahead and put this together. And I have my, actually, I fix it tool set. So we're gonna start by unscrewing these two screws here. Plate. Now 
we're gonna go ahead and remove the SSD from its packaging here. But first, forgot one thing. I need to remove this installation screw at the top here. Now we'll take the SSD. And as you can see, it only really fits in one way. So we'll want to place it in there, push it in, and then hold this down. And while we're holding this down, I'll put the screw back inside. And the drive is installed. The only thing left to do is to put the cover back on. And reattach it with these screws. And again, I'm not gonna use the uh, included heat sink here. Um, I've heard some people say it, it actually made the drive hotter in some instances, especially with a sealed enclosure, so I'm just going to leave that off for now. And with the screws tightened, there is our portable bus-powered Thunderbolt 3 drive. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the computer and let's go ahead and run some speed tests. So here we are on my iMac. I'm going to go ahead and plug the drive in. And with the drive plugged in, I get a, the disk you attach was not readable by this computer. We're gonna go ahead and choose initialize and that'll open up disk utility. And let's see if I can find that drive. It's this a data 2.05 terabyte. Go ahead and choose erase. And I'm gonna name this, I don't know. For now, let me just, uh, so I'm gonna be using it for Final Cut Pro. I'm just gonna, FCPX and I'm going to format it. I'm going to keep the APFS, it's SSD, and I'm going to leave everything else as default. I choose erase. And it says operation was successful. I'm going to choose done. And there is the drive there. FCPX, APFS external. So we're going to close that. So now that we see it mounted and there's no data on it, let's go ahead and run a speed test. And yeah, black magic speed test. So I'm going to start a test and this should be the internal drive right now. So this is my internal Apple SSD drive for my iMac, and it's, uh, I believe it's one terabyte. So here are the speeds, looks like I'm getting about 1700 megabytes per second for write, and around 21, 22 for read. So let's go ahead and stop that, and let's choose the External drive it says ex choose external. There it is, FCPX. We're going to hit open. Let's start a speed test with that. So it looks like about 900 megabytes a second for read or for write, sorry. And 
Let's see what the second test gives us for read. So about 1200 megabytes per second for read. So 910 megabytes a second for write and about 1200, 1250 for read. Pretty good speeds actually for an XR drive. Let's stop that. And just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and test um, an external disk based hard drive. And this is a my book Thunderbolt. So this is a Thunderbolt 2 going through a hub connected to Thunderbolt 3. So the write speeds here are about 162 megabytes a second for write and 172 megabytes a second for read. And again, this is an external disk-based drive. So this external SSD is much faster than my external disk space drive. Not quite as fast or not as fast as my internal SSD, but for an external SSD, it should work fine under Final Cut Pro. So currently I shoot and produce these videos at 1080p at 24 frames per second or FPS. At some point in the future, I plan on moving up to 2160p or 4K at the same 24 FPS. The speed tests indicate that I'm well within the speeds needed, even if I wanted to go up to 4K at 60 FPS using ProRes 422HQ or Cinema DNG RAW. Now, OWC advertises speeds up to 1,553 megabytes per second, which is roughly 1.5 gigabytes a second. My test speeds were about 1.2 gigabytes a second, uh, which should be sufficient for my needs. Again, you are providing your own NVMe SSD, so performance will largely depend on the SSD you install. The two terabyte XPG Pro NVMe SSD I purchased wasn't the cheapest nor the most expensive SSD in the market, but it does provide a pretty decent bang for the buck. Overall, for about $320, I'm happy with the speeds and storage of the OWC Envoy Express paired with the XPG SSD, and even use it for production of this video right here. Uh, it'll be great for portability as I do plan to do some vlogs in the future away from home and away from my desktop iMac. And with Apple Silicon on the way, I'm hoping for a portable iPad Pro, uh, maybe with a version of Final Cut Pro Express Lite. <laughs> Who knows? Now that Apple is going all in with their homegrown CPUs, the possibilities are limitless. And that's going to wrap it up for my look at the OWC Envoy Express. If you want to follow my footsteps and assemble your own portable Thunderbolt 3 external drive, I'll leave links down in the description below. Uh, if you'd like to see more of this type of content, please let me know in the comments below. And until the next one, please take care and be safe out there.